folks, how are you all doing? Hope you're keeping safe out there. Today I'm reviewing the Transformers Legacy Evolution lines, Voyager class, comic book universe, Tarn. And yeah, it's a damn good figure. Tarn is one of those characters that was originally created in the IDW comic books universe. He's a... well, not a very nice person, let's put it that way. He's the leader of the DJD, the Decepticon Justice Department or Division. I can't remember which off the top of my head. Basically a group that goes around capturing, torturing and murdering Decepticons who have broken the Decepticon rules. I.e. deserters or traitors or basically just being not as evil as they kind of want them to be. But Tarn is, strangely enough, very charismatic and also very caring of his troops. Until he kind of loses his temper. But he's an interesting character in the books and he was very popular. He had the power to effectively talk people to death. I think something we have in common. He could effectively just speak to someone and eventually kill the spark inside of them until they explode. Interesting power. The design of him is interesting. I actually really like it. He oozes that uh, big baddie Decepticon energy with all those purples and even making the Decepticon logo into his own faceplate is very on brand for the leader of the DJD. Now the figure itself is one of those great examples of Hasbro putting all their effort into Voyager class Decepticons. I mean like you've had great ones like Jaxus and uh, Cyclonus and Tarn here continues that um, trend of just being a fantastic figure. Uh, honestly if this had come out last year it might have been in my top two, two or three Transformers last year. Maybe even the top spot is that good. But yeah, as you can see, sculpt-wise, he's just fantastic. He's really well articulated, really well proportioned. A great representation of his inc of his uh, comic book design, and he's just really imposing and articulates fantastically. I've got to stop saying fantastically. I said that too much. He articulates brilliantly, effortlessly, stylistically, stylishly. That's the word. Yeah. He can pull off really great poses, especially with that double ion cannon on his arm. He's a big Megatron fanboy, so he went one step beyond and had two ion cannons on his arm, so... <laughs> but, yeah, as I said, he looks tremendous. He's a big, imposing figure as well. Like, there's, no, there's no hollowness to him either. Everywhere there could be a hollow part. There's fillers, there's panels. There's a sense of quality and definitely getting your money's worth with this figure. Now, some people might say he's too thin. Like, he's, he's got very... He's very broad, but not very deep, shall we say. But neither is his original design, so you can't really hold that against the figure. Now, comparing him to other figures in the collection, you can see that he's... Well, as I say, really imposing. He's a big Voyager-class figure. He looks really great with other wave mates, such as the um, Lyo Convoy that comes out in the Legacy Evolution. And even just against other Transformers in my collection, he fits in really well and is, as I say, an imposing figure. Oh, one thing to note as well is just because this is a modern figure. He has 5mm ports all over him and his weapons can have those siege blast effects which I kind of hope we get more of coming uh, forward because the ones I've got are starting to age a little bit and I'd kind of like to see some new ones coming out. But yeah, in robot mode, no complaints whatsoever. His vehicle mode is fine. It's just fine. It's a Cybertronian double barrel tank. It's nothing stupendous. Um, there's a bit of an irony in the fact that in the comic books, he's, he's, well, we're told he's addicted to transforming back and forth between his two, mo the two modes so much he burns out his transformation cog and often has them surgically removed from other transformers and has his replaced so he can keep burning through them. But you never really see him transform that much in the comic books, so I think it's a bit of a, run of a long standing joke. Getting him into his vehicle mode here is not difficult, but as I say, the vehicle mode is just fine. I wouldn't be displaying him in it, I don't think anyone really will. But he can do it, and it's a faithful representation, and the transformation is interesting. It's just all the wow factor is definitely in the robot mode. And I think, like, in summation, that's the, the best way of summing up this figure is wow factor. He, he looks so good. Especially if you're an IDW fan, he's a must for your collection. If you're just a Decepticon fan, he's a must. I really hope we get the, the rest of the DJD. Uh, there's some interesting designs in there, maybe turning into an electric chair or a grinder or, or an acid vat is something that has, but maybe it won't be able to sneak into a kid's toy line, but here's hoping. So yeah folks, if you can get this guy, I recommend picking him up. You can get him at the online retail as your usual ones, your in demand, your compares, your Hasbro pulses. Smiths have apparently started getting him in, though I haven't seen them on their website, but 
apparently they're turning up in person and yeah that's it folks i uh, hope you enjoyed the review if you did please leave a like leave a comment and if you're not subscribed to the channel please subscribe for more reviews in the future and until next time folks i want you all to stay safe stay sane and keep on rolling and i'll see you all next time Ta-da!